Hi, I'm Peter from Coffee Parts, and today I'm here with Paul Asquith, talking all things pressure profiling on the Rocket R91. Paul, thank you for coming. We've had mad chats before about pressure profiling and I've learned so much. So I'm really enjoying being here with you today and want to dive deeper into pressure profiling. Thanks for having me. Um, you know, this machine is a super powerful tool for the home barista and I really um, look forward to seeing people taking it on board and having it in their homes and playing with it. You've, you've got so many uh, tools that you can use on this machine to make coffee next level. Yeah. On that note, we are going to talk a bit about the Rocket R91, then we're going to dive in and look at pressure profiling, how that affects coffee, what is pressure profiling and how it can be done on the Rocket R91. And then we'll go through and explain the Rocket R91 in more details, the menu, how it can be set up, etc. So first things first, I might just dive in and talk about this machine, let Absolutely. people know about the Rocket. Yeah. So, Rocket's design philosophy has always been to build timeless machines. All their machines have pretty much been tech-free from the visual perspective. You know, they've hidden PIDs in the Giotto or on the R58 that made the control removal. On this machine, it is more visible. The reason they've done that is Rocket have decided to basically bring their commercial tech into the home machine and build a machine that's on par with the best machines in the world. So everything on this machine, from the steam valve to the groove head, the porter filters, gauges, is commercial. They've effectively just made a small commercial with the highest tech available. So it is a fully saturated groove head, stainless build, stainless boilers, 1.9 lead on the groove head, so a lot of stability. Compared to like something like a premium machine that has an E61 and you've got either a heat exchange or even a twin boiler boiler inside and you've got the thermosiphon, with this big boiler and the hot water literally in there, it's super stable. You've got 1.9 liters of water. That means that when you are pulling a shot, there's a small amount of water coming in, so the variance is very low. They pair this, instead of going for a vibrating or rotary pump, they use a geared pump. So as you move the lever here, you're actually increasing or decreasing the pump, so you can run it two bars, three bars, four bars, five bars, whatever that is. Bear in mind, if the machine is plumbed in, the lowest setting will be whatever the water feed is coming. So if you are plumbing in the machine, you'll need to use a pressure limiting valve and really dial that pressure down to just say two bars. The steam boiler is 3.6 liters. So you've got a massive steam boiler. You can run steam, cool touch steam on, commercial valve. And within the menu, like most machines now, you've got a scheduling app. You can turn off the steam boiler and run it as an espresso only machine. You can adjust the PID front and rear boiler, so espresso and steam boiler. So you can run different temperatures. You've got your twin gauges. You, you can plumb it in or run it reservoir. So it is a 10 amp plug and play machine, ready to go. So that just covers the quick specs of the machine. We know what it is. It's up there with the best in the world. But the interesting part, now that we've said all that, is pressure profiling. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, pressure profiling can be one of those things that when you first start to look and go out to Google and look at all of the reviews on pressure profiling machines, it can be super confusing. There's lots of people out there talking about pressure profiling. Some people saying that it's useless, some people saying that it's too much, but I'm here basically to simplify the idea of pressure profiling as well. With the R91, um, you can just run it as a straight volume, volumetric machine. It's a really powerful machine for that, it's solid. But th then you can also have five different programs on the computer screen itself. Yeah. And that's where you can really have some fun. Um, yeah, that's one thing I, I've noticed a lot of people do talk about how complicated pressure profiling, and you are going to explain it. But with these machines, you can set up multiple profiles and have them emulate a traditional machine with red rotary where start, go up, that's it. You can have them emulate a lever machine where you know you ramp in, build it up and, and ramp down. 
So they don't actually have to be complicated. I, f I feel like the internet has overcomplicated them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, people have overcomplicated it and you can overcomplicate it. And you, I'm, I'm sure when the first few go out and people start to play with them at home, they're going to confuse themselves first. But I think if you, if you follow some simple rules, you can really get some great coffee from it. Um, set yourself up a few profiles and play the flavor game at home. Play, um, you know, this shot is better than this shot and decide what works for you. And obviously every coffee is going to be different, but um, there's so much ability in there to create an amazing shot. And I also forgot to mention, you can actually do a manual shot as well. So you can practice a manual shot. Yeah. And if you like that manual shot, you can save it. Then you can save it and and lock that lock that in. So you don't have to sit there and fiddle around with the computer screen straight from the get go. Just use this paddle, um, the variable pump. There, you'll be able to uh, play around with the profile. And then when you're really happy with something and you, you're kind of close or you want to tweak it a little bit, then you lock it into the computer screen. Then you got something. That's that you one can thing play they've with. done. Cool. They have run it volumetric so you got the two the single and double mm. volumetrics you can do your profile on the fly you can save profiles but these days a lot of the coffee roasters actually with their coffee give you a recipe card so you can know your weight in and your weight out and some coffee roasters are giving you the program so x amount of bars at x amount of time for the different stages whether it be on this or another pressure mm. profiling machine so there is a lot more information out there absolutely i mean you know from the get-go with those recipe cards too, you you're probably going to have to throw some of the some of the settings out. Yeah. Um, um, not all roasters out there are playing with pressure profiling machines, and they're certainly not creating recipes for them. So um, they will have a, a very simple amount of coffee in, amount of coffee out in a certain time, and there's some of the things that you may may have to just throw out the window and and have a setting that works for you yep. to start with. Um, yep. You know, follow their guidelines of maybe the coffee in, yep. but then you can craft that flavor yep. and create something that you really like at home. Yep. So with pressure profiling, we were having a chat earlier and you really explained really neatly what the beginning or the ramp up, the top or the middle of the body yep. and what the tail end does to coffee. So can we go through that again? Absolutely. To break it into simple, simple steps, I guess, I, I like to talk about pre-infusion, the actual infusion, and the post-infusion. Um, so there's, there's three parts of that shot. And when you're talking pre-infusion, it may be uh, two bar, three bar, something like that. But what you're doing with that pre-infusion, you're, you're pre-wetting the coffee. So you're allowing the coffee to be wet, you're minimizing that chance for water to channel through the coffee, you're giving it every possibility to create a really nice extraction. But in that time, you can actually build the body of the actual espresso shot as well. Yeah. So if you're tasting the espresso shot and you feel like um, there's not enough body, yeah. then you up that pre-infusion by a second or two. And, and likewise, if you feel like it's a little bit too too full, then you can bring it down a little bit. So you uh, you then have the ability to kind of build the mouthfeel of that espresso yourself. Yeah. Stage two is obviously that infusion where you start to ramp up. And in, a, in an old lever machine, the old lever machine, you would pull the lever down, and it'd be a really soft infusion, mm -hmm. and then bang, and it'd go right up to nine, even yeah. 12 bars, something like that, and, and then start to ramp down. Yeah. Whereas here, you can kind of ramp up a little bit slower. Yep. Um, you can go bang to nine if you yeah. want to. Um, you can even peak it a little bit lower at yeah, eight or Yeah, or I, I sort of play around uh, six and seven because yep. I find that that little bit of slower flow rate can actually increase your extraction yield, can yep. in increase the way you're extracting that coffee. Um, and it's a little bit gentler on the coffee so you, you don't push those astringent over extracted yep. flavors into the cup. Yep. So you actually end up with the ability to really create a very juicy, nice mouthfeel coffee. Yeah. So I, I tend to set mine at about seven bar. Yep. Seven bar for maybe five, six seconds, something like that. Yep. And then 
we start to ramp down. In the post infusion section, the longer that section is, you can craft the amount of acidity or the actual overall finish of that coffee. Yep. So the longer the middle section is, you'll, you'll extract more of that coffee. You'll get to the point where you've extracted a nice amount of sweetness, um, and there is a point that you will start to over extract the coffee and yep. get that astringency, bitterness, even yep. some smokiness. So you can cut it there and start to ramp down and just finish off that shot and polish it. So you've got that nice blend of body, acidity, sweetness, a little bit of bitterness to create that really nice rounded espresso. So if you feel when you're tasting it, it's not sweet or, or bitter enough, you can shorten that kind of Amazing. ramp out section. Yeah that post infusion section that we feel like it needs a little bit more vibrancy, a little bit more acidity, you can stretch it out and you can create this uh, yeah, really nice espresso shot just by making tweaks a second here and there will make a really big difference to your espresso. Now, one of the kind of, it's not a myth, but it's a good guideline has always been 30 mils in 30 seconds. And I know this confuses a lot of people because yeah. pre-infusion, is it in the 30 seconds or not? I already know the answer to this, but like, <laughs> but I'm just doing it more just to open the discussion. So, so what does timing and pre-infusion that look like from an overall shot? And is there a rule to it or not? Yeah, so, so I've loaded that question <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> so some of, yeah, obviously with a traditional machine, yep. um, the water's just going to go straight into the coffee. Yep. So 30 mils in 30 seconds probably is around about right. Yep. This machine's completely different. You're changing the flow rate of the water yep. through that coffee throughout the whole espresso shot. Yep. So just saying 30 mils in 30 seconds just is not a rule that can yep. work on a machine like this. You've got the ability to softly extract that coffee okay. um, and you can easily get to a minute on, yep. an, on an espresso shot and create yep. something really nice. The pre-infusion probably doesn't have a lot to do with the overall extraction. Yep. All you're doing is pre-wetting that coffee and creating a really nice bed yep. for that higher pressure to travel through. So um, it's it's almost like a preparation step. Yep. Yep. And then you've got the actual extraction that you can play around with. And in many cases, pre-infusions, especially not on a pressure profiling machine, as I say, in E61 where it's mechanical pre-infusion, it's helping reduce the channeling through the shot to get that better balance absolutely. as it is anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Pre-infusion is a super powerful tool yeah. for that. You, you end up with um, being able to get that water through your espresso, through the coffee, uh, in a really, really controlled uh, method. Yeah. And it's just improving that espresso by incremental um, growth every time that you, you play around with it. So on this pressure profiling machine, we're not really talking temperature today, not to add an extra complexity, we're just talking about pressure. Yep. We've got your pre-infusion, your main section, your body, and your ramp down. Mm. Should we jump in, make some coffees, explain how it works, and see the differences? Absolutely, that's the best way that this machine shines, is trying one, trying the other, and making those tweaks to the espresso. So we're gonna run some shots on the machine. We're gonna be using one of the local roasters in this area called Damien Alves, who has blacksmith. So this is his honeycomb blend. So let's get some beans in. So Damien came in yesterday and actually set up a profile on this machine. So we've got profile A. And what he did, he wanted to emulate a lever machine with a really soft pre-infusion, and then ramp at two and a half bars for seven seconds, then ramping up to eight bars for the body, and then ramping back down. So eight bars is a bit lower than the lever machines, but almost along your style of six to seven. Absolutely. So I feel yep. we'll do his profile, we'll let you play with a profile, and then we'll set up a generic profile, kind of like a normal E61 pre-infusion, yeah, cool. nine bar, and that's it and kind of see the difference between the three coffees, how they taste, how they feel. Yep. So we're just going to dial in 21 grams and run a shot. I'll let you take over. Thank you. Perfect. 
So I've already got the profile set for this coffee at profile A. So once we lock it in, we're gonna pre-infuse for seven and a half seconds at two and a half bar, which is what it's doing now. You'll see on the screen, it then ramp up to eight bars. So the main body of the shot. And then we're gonna be ramping back down in two different stages. So just about now, we bring it back to five bars, running quite a long tail on that, and then popping it back down to two and a half to really just polish off that shot. You may notice that the machine is actually quite quiet, but it may make a few whistles and a few little noises along the way. Um, that's just the gear pump doing its job. So you don't have to worry about those, those noises that it's making. And you can watch it through on the graph what stage it is of yep. the shot. It's weighing out at just uh, 40, I think that was 41 grams, a classic two to one ratio. Yep. Cheers. Yes. You know what, tastes very different to just running the standard yeah. you know, three bar, eight bar. Absolutely. You can really feel the difference. Yeah, there's a there's a level of clarity that you get from a, a shot like this because you, you're able to dial that clarity in. Yep. I'm just gonna load this up again with 21 grams. Absolutely. But I thought you could just show doing it through the menu, kind of setting it up like using the display in terms of the profile. Let yeah. me describe this out. I'll jump in and do the profile. So you tap the R here, that gives you the ability to go into the profiles. I'm gonna select profile B, and here we can um, select the time and then the uh, amount of bar that you're pushing through that shot. So we're going to do, as we said, a traditional time of about four seconds pre-infusion. Followed by a lengthy second stage. And so we don't have to worry about other parts of that. So we've got four seconds. And then we bring that down to three bar, and this one up to eight bar. And we're done. Scroll through that menu, and we're good. Hit the tick, and then we've got a profile. Exit that. Tap the R again to bring it back to this screen and bring it to the profile B. Now, let's run the same beans. Let's play up the profile, maybe even draw it out on the fly and just see what results we get. Yeah, it sounds good. I mean, from the get-go, I would like to uh, bring the body down just a little bit and um, clean it up just a little bit on the ends. Yeah. Maybe uh, take away some of that bitterness and see what and see what this coffee can give. Yeah, let's do it. So we're just gonna run 21 grams again. And this time around, you're gonna put your magic touch Absolutely. Life's too short to have uh, a computer tell me what to do. So we've moved it out of profile A into a manual profile now. Mm. We're gonna have some fun. So I'm going to shorten the espresso pre-infusion a little bit. This is super fun. You can really craft some crazy, crazy profiles with a machine like this. And if we like this shot, we can just hit, we can do it now, we just hit the star, and it's actually recorded, it's just recording it now to that last setting. So we can actually redo this one again. Definitely different. It's hard yeah. to judge. Yeah. I like them both. I so, do like yeah. this one. This one's um, obviously uh, it's got a little bit more clarity, um, yeah. a little bit less body, yeah. um, more of that that sweetness and acidity. Um, there's some, uh, you know, this is a really nice coffee. I mean, obviously, it really depends on how the drink is going to drink it as well. It's yeah. funny because the same bean, the previous one felt more traditional. Yes. Like a little bit harder. Yep. yep. This kind of feels a little bit 
gentler, softer, but really nice. Yep, and I think that traditional one, you know, would be great in milk. Yep. Um, this would be great drinking a black, and I think that's the best thing about a machine like this is you can go, well, I feel like a black coffee, I'm yeah. going to run it like this, so get that really nice clarity that the coffee has to give. Um, but, you know, in the morning when you feel like a, a milky coffee, use your milk profile, you can set all different profiles. The most interesting part is same beans, same grinder, 21 grams, same water temperature, same quality of the water, like without going to rabbit hole, so same water, same TDS, mm. but two very different shots. Absolutely. And, it's, and it's both beautiful, just kind of different, you know. Paul, thank you for coming today. You're welcome. I feel like I personally learned so much about pressure profiling. I've enjoyed playing on the Rocket i91, and I hope everyone else has enjoyed too. So thank you again. You're welcome. Thank if you. there's any questions for me or for Paul, hit us up on the comments below. This video has brought you value. Hit the thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe. We're doing three videos a week, so you'll be notified on every video. Thank you again.